Okay, Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us on the uh, IBA Management Committee's second webinar. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, bear resistant cans in North America. So for those of you who have not uh, joined us before, um, we are the Management Committee for the International Association for Bear Research and Management. Um, and so what we're going to do today um, is share uh, some results of a, a little survey we did um, and then have an open panel discussion about uh, bear resistant cans and our experiences with them. Um, so uh, before I get started, uh, if you guys can just uh, shut down your video and, and mute for now um, and then put your questions in the Q&A and we'll answer those questions after the brief presentation. Um, and it's fairly brief, so we, we just want to give you the numbers and then we'll have an open discussion after that. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, before we get into it, we want to make sure we're on the same page as what we're talking about here. So when we say bear is the can, um, we're talking about these rolling polycarts that are plastic, usually 95 gallon capacity, um, and are tested to basically prevent bears from being able to get into it. You can see here, this is a bear in North Carolina testing a rear Pacific bear as we can. And you can see he doesn't really care about someone knocking on a window. But basically, you know, they're going to do a whole bunch of things. And the idea is that this can is going to resist all this bear's efforts uh, to do it. Now, we refer to bear resistant, not bear proof, because there is nothing that's bear proof. But we're hoping for bear resistance. So, um, so basically, uh, we reached out to jurisdictions that had greater than 200 bear resistant cans that they knew were deployed in their area. And we asked them, hey, you know, how many do you think are out there? Um, what type, what brand, what brand are, are they? And then how are they distributed? Are they distributed at the state level, county level, city level? Do individuals buy them? Um, also ask them who pays for the cans? Are they, are they offered the same rate for pickup as a regular can? Are they free? Do you have to rent them? Do you have to buy them? And then finally, did you have any issues that you're aware of um, for cans that are in your area? So uh, what we found was, again, seven jurisdictions, um, so states and provinces that have, uh, I don't know if wide scale is the right word, but over 200 cans deployed that we're aware of, um, 10 different types of cans. And these represent over 78,000 bears and cans out on the landscape. So who provided the data? Uh, Dave Battle in Alaska, Vanessa Sandry in British Columbia, Mark Vieira in Colorado. Uh, I'm Dave Telesco, should have introduced myself, I apologize, um, in Florida. Catherine Syracuse in Louisiana, Colleen Olfenbutel in North Carolina, Mike Madoni, New Jersey, and Dan Gibbs in Tennessee. Um, and that little symbol represents folks who contributed data and are also on the IBA Management Committee. Uh, so they're going to be on the panel, but also Karen, Catherine Syracuse with Louisiana, who is not on the committee, she's going to be on the panel today as well. So let's go through the models. So the one that is most widely distributed among the jurisdictions that we surveyed is the Kodiak products. This is A for automated. So that means that um, a fully automated waste system where the driver pulls up and a mechanical arm comes up, grabs the can and dumps it without somebody having to get up and unlock it. So that's when we say automated. And if it's an M, we're talking about manual. Someone actually has to unlock it in order for it to be serviced. So again, Kodiak products, six of the seven jurisdictions that we surveyed, they actually have one or more Kodiaks. Uh, the next one is Bear Saver. This is a manual and in four jurisdictions, but it's important to note here, it's discontinued. Uh, they no longer make these polycarps. 
Uh, same distribution over four jurisdictions have this reared Pacific. This one's automated. And then the manual toter bear resistant can is in three jurisdictions. The automated uh, toter, which is fairly new on the market, this is in two jurisdictions. And then the rest of these are only in one jurisdiction. So Barracuda, Barracuda Critter Can, which is manual, it's a screw top, that's in New Jersey. The Growler, which is manual, um, that's in Louisiana. And again, this is another one that was discontinued. You got solid waste systems in Colorado. This is a manual. And then you've got what I'm calling the Rollins hardware kit. And basically it's a regular polycart, but has these metal rims on the body and metal rims attached to the lid. And then you clip those together. So it adds rigidity. Um, and then that's how you're making a normal cam bear resistance. So that is in British Columbia. And finally, we have the Barracuda Stealth 1 manual, and that's in Louisiana. And I will tell you that that looks an awful lot like a toter manual, but that's for another discussion. So we talked about 78,000 cans. This is the uh, kind of how that all breaks down. So the most cans out there are these ones that are modified with the Rollins hardware kit. That's 30,000. All of these are in British Columbia. Um, then you've got the Rear Pacific, the Toter Manual, uh, Kodiak, and, and so on. So really you're talking about, um, you know, three or four of these are the lion's share of what cans are out there in, in mass. We talk about availability, um, depending on where you are is your availability. So for example, um, for Alaska, it's available at the city level, but also at the individual level. And so what I mean is, you know, some cities provide it, other cities, you have to buy it yourself. Um, so same thing for British Columbia, some of the counties provide it, or sorry, provinces, um, cities, or yeah, as an individual, you can get it. Um, now in Louisiana, I have an asterisk here. Only one county offers the bear resistant can and it's parishes in Louisiana. Um, and that county, there's two cities in that county and those cities provide the cans as well. So that's the only jurisdiction that does not allow individuals to buy cans. Uh, and you can look at New Jersey um, only individuals provide are, are, are able to buy them. Now you'd imagine that creates a problem because buying them as an individual, it's super expensive because you're shipping one can at a time versus buying them in bulk. Uh, and then Tennessee have an asterisk as well. Um, in this case, it's one city, Pigeon Forge. And um, in some cases, individuals can buy them or the individual, sorry, or the city provides. So when we talk about payment for cans, it's, it's pretty wide variety here. Um, so for four jurisdictions, they just rent them. So whoever is providing the waste service, they're renting the can anywhere from five to $15 extra a month. That's on top of regular fees for waste service. Um, in three jurisdictions, it's free to use, but it's the municipal, municipality, the local government is paying that extra charge not the residents. Um, in North Carolina, they have an area where if you buy a regular can for like 96 bucks, they're saying you buy a bear resistant can for exactly the same amount. Uh, in Tennessee, it's interesting. If you're a resident in this city, you can get the can at no extra cost. If you're a rental property owner, you have to pay 50% of the cost and then you own the can. So you're not, you're not renting it. Uh, in Florida, what we did was cost share with residents uh, and then they own the can. So basically uh, the state paid for some, the county or the city paid for some, and then the residents pay you know, $40 or up to $100 for a $210, $215 can, but they own it. Uh, and then um, in Colorado, New Jersey, in both cases, uh, they had grants or it was a research project where 
um, people were able to get cans at no cost to them. So looking at that, basically it looks like Florida and North Carolina are a bunch of grumpies because we don't give them free uh, to people. Um, everywhere else, there's some option for that. Um, but you'll notice that there's multiple options across the board. And again, it's because, you know, for example, in Alaska, they're not free everywhere you go. Some municipalities may provide that. Other ones require you to rent it. Other ones require you to buy. So it's not, you know, a statewide thing. You're, you're seeing variability depending on where you are within each state. So at this point, we're going to talk about issues we've experienced with barriers and cans in our jurisdictions. Um, and I'm going to open it up to the uh, jurisdiction, you know, the panel member who can speak to the issues they've had. The point that I want to make very, very clear here is that in most of these cases, we're reporting anecdotal instances. We may not know the full sample size of how many cans are out there. So we may be reporting an issue that's not prevalent across all cans. If we do know those numbers, we'll tell you. But most of the time, we're just telling you, hey, these are the experiences we've had. I don't know how prevalent they are. So what I'm trying to get to here is we are not, neither the IBA committee or these individual jurisdictions saying one can is great, one can is not. We're not approving or disapproving any particular can type. So I just want to make that crystal clear. Uh, so now I'm going to get into uh, Rare Pacific. So I'll pass it over to Dave Battle. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, Alaska, we've we've uh, we've had quite a bit of issues with the rear rig cans, the new ones that work with automated trucks um, being breached. Uh, we don't know how many of those were not latched properly in the first place, but we know that quite a few of them have uh, have had issues and were latched. Uh, in some cases, we have both brown and black bears. Uh, in Alaska, and, and I'm primarily speaking of, I'm the area biologist for Anchorage, so uh, I'm primarily speaking of that, but uh, we have uh, both black and brown bears. There have been a few cases where they were ripped open by brown bears, but in most of the cases, most of the problems we've had, both brown and black bears, certain individual bears have just learned to flip them over enough times until the gravity lock mechanism trips. Um, and this, we really started seeing this first in a, a small community just south of Anchorage called Girdwood. Uh, but at this point, we've seen it a lot in Anchorage around Eagle River. And uh, Rerig was very responsive. They, uh, we contacted them. They actually stopped production of their bear resistant cans for a time at all their facilities when, uh, when we were talking to them. I think that was summer of 2020 while they worked on the problem and they ended up actually reworking the mechanism and tightening it up. We don't know how well that has worked because we don't have a good way to, uh, to track it. You know, we get, we get intermittent reports and we can't always tell the new mechanism from the old mechanism. I think they just tightened it so it was harder to open, but, um, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm not an engineer. I don't know, you know, but I think that's all. I think that's the basics of what they did was just tighten it. So it was, it was harder to, harder to open. And we got them to, to mark the new mechanisms with a little dot, but they're marking that's on them. So it's kind of, uh, uh, kind of, it was, it was something, but it wasn't the best solution. Um, uh, like I say though, I, we don't know how often they're happened because they weren't latched properly, but there have been a lot of instances we've got videos and we've messed with, with them ourselves and we've learned that if they just flip the cans over enough they'll open or if it goes over onto its back and it shoves it across like a parking lot and then it just suddenly stops the can just pops right open uh, uh, david david yeah. are you aware on the rework gravity latch were there any issues with um, consistency in, in being able to be dumped by the waste service or, or you don't, you've not heard that? 
I, you know, I haven't heard my, I'll bet there have been, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. I think that that's why they were as light as they were in the first place. Yep. So truck drivers wouldn't have a problem dumping them. Yep. Uh, and I think that's probably what took them a while trying to fiddle with uh, a balance of being easy for the truck to dump and for bears not getting into it. Um, yep. They, we, you know, we talked quite a bit to rear rig and to the main waste provider in uh, Anchorage and in some of the other cities that uses them, Alaska Waste. And um, uh, they, uh, you know, they've actually met with us and stuff like that. But we talked to uh, IGBC quite a bit and they ended up retesting the rear rig. And I know at least one or two of their cans, particularly the 95 gallon, have actually lost their IGBC certification at this point. Yeah. They are still certified by WildSafe BC, but um, like I say, Rear continues to be uh, concerned and, and responsive. It's just we're trying to get the best thing we can out on the out on the streets. Toter, we we've had we've got a few of those out on the streets too with a different waste company, and we started seeing some uh, issues with them. Uh, we haven't actually talked to that company, but my understanding is that they use the same latch. The actual same gravity latch as rear rig does the same mechanism they i think they buy it from somebody else yeah so it's yeah i think it's fast yeah and, that, and that's the thing is um it seems like like you said if it's a gravity latch and you make it more difficult for bears it could be more difficult for the the, the waste yeah. service so yeah, yeah yeah well we've got kodiaks as well and right you know, a smaller company we have yet to have a Port of a wild bear getting into a Kodiak. We just, yep. you know, uh, uh, there, there's not as many of them out there, but from what we've seen, they've, that is just a beefier can and maybe their gravity latch mechanism might be better. I don't know. I, like I say, I'm not an engineer, but, but they, they certainly seem to last better than, uh, than some of the others. And that's, that's a similar experience. So what I, I, I should have mentioned to everybody. So I'm going to go buy can type. So we're going to revisit Kodiak. We're going to be revisiting Toter, but I'm I'm basically going by can type, and then I'll I'll revisit you know different places. So, um, so that's uh, Alaska's experience. So I talked to you about sample sizes. Um, in our case, since we were part of the grant funding to buy the cans, we actually know the sample size. So it's not as much anecdotal. No, I don't. I can't tell you every single problem was reported to us, but I at least have a feel for it. So, for rear rig of the 3,800 cans that went out, we are only aware of two that were actually breached by bears, which I think was really interesting because it's such a different experience in Alaska. Um, now, it may be that what we got were the adjusted gravity latches versus the ones that were not. Um, but we did have some inconsistency with servicing, which might also explain because they had tightened up the latch. Um, I will tell you that we had an odd situation with Rearig recently. So in the most southernmost part of Florida, Collier County bought Barrison cans through our grant program. And they had about 80 cans that were left on the lot outside exposed to the elements for over 12 months. And they got a little rusty and they actually froze up. You couldn't open them. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, well, what? I don't understand because we did, we actually have cans in the same county, but in use and we're not having problems with those. So um, I was very impressed. Um, we talked to Rearig, said, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, it was after their warranty was up, but they still provide us with brand new cans to replace those um, because obviously they want to be responsive to it. So they came to Florida, they picked up 86 cans. They're testing to see what, what was wrong and what, what caused those things to freeze up. Um, so we've been pleased with their responsiveness. And again, we have not seen the same thing um, that Alaska has. So I am now going to go to Catherine Syracuse and she's going to tell you her experience with rigs in Louisiana. You know, just to throw it out there, Dave, yeah. you know, uh, Alaska bears might just be sm smarter than Florida bears. Is hey, it? I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just wanted to throw that out. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Hey, what can I say? Louis what, what can I say? Louisiana, we're pretty unique in, in everything. 
<laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, we have also seen where the bears go, well, we have open ditches, open drainage in some of our rural areas. And consequently, we, when the residents put the cans to the curb, you have a narrow curb and the bears can pretty much pick and choose which streets have the narrow curves and the, and the open drainage. And the bears will just typically go down the street and knock the can over, it falls over in the ditch and pops right open. That's with the Rarick. Um, in some areas we have um, a little group of bears, it's not just one, and it's in an area where sugar cane everywhere down here. But this particular is very rural. There's only four houses. Um, it's in a curve and the bears will actually pull whatever garbage can and, and these residents tend to be my little guinea pigs down there. They'll take any can I get to see, you know, what we're, what kind of service we're going to get from the can. And the bears will actually pull the cans into the roadway at, at dusk or at dark. So the cane tractors or the 18 wheelers hauling cane can hit the cans and pop them open. <laughs> bust the cans to pieces up they get into the garbage. But yeah, we, we have some pretty unique things yeah. happening down here. That's that's and cool using right there. Yes, yes. You know, so that resident um he came up with the idea. He I have a very good working relationship with our waste provider. Um I've been working with the same people for the past 13, 14 years. So we're always in communications with each other as to what happens, what goes on. Our waste provider, the way our contract is written in St. Mary Parish, our waste provider provides the garbage cans. Okay, And the residents pay uh, a monthly fee for the use of the cans. And as long as that contract is in effect, the cans from that contractor will be used. Now, in our contract, the parish specifies which cans are used in which areas, which we do have um, some high traffic areas, which Highway 90 pretty much um, dissects the parish um, parallel, you know, so we have a, a north and south area north of Highway 90. Our bear activity is not as abundant as south of Highway 90. So south of Highway 90, that's where we were using um, the other, the growler cans that aren't, you know, that are discontinued. But what we started doing with the rare rigs, that particular resident asked if he could use hood latches. He's a car enthusiast. And so, you know, when you have drag cars and stuff like that, you have latches to hold those hoods down. And we talked back and forth with the waste provider and they were on board for anything to help um, keep the bears from breaching these cans, especially in those areas because we needed a new can to use in those areas because South Louisiana, our weather tends to break the plastic down. After about a year or two years, the plastic starts to degrade, the metal begins to degrade, um, we've even seen that with the Rarig locks, um, the um, inside locks, not the actual lock itself, but the, the hook that hooks into that begins to rust out completely and come off. Um, we get insects that get inside the mechanisms and want to live inside the mechanisms and cause issues that way. Um, but we started using, he, he used the hood latches on the can, and we found that the bears could not compromise the can at that point. Now, they still could pull the can into the roadway and bust the can open that way. So he began using a portable electric fence around the can so that he's got, you know, several whammies that come, in, come into effect. And so we, we've reduced the number of times that we have to replace the cans at his house um, because some of the bears do fear, even when the can's at the curb, that they're going to get shot. So they, they tend to kind of leave it alone. Um, we have also seen uh, the gravity locks do not open easily with the automated system. So whether it's a rare can or uh, if the resident has decided to do a DIY, a do-it-yourself, or if 
our waste hauler has modified some cans with these hood latches. All of our, quote, bear proof, which bear resistant cans, are on a manual pickup system. We don't do any of them on the automated system because of the delays and the, because of the issues. Some cans work, some cans don't. One truck works better, one truck doesn't, that sort of thing. So we've just gone ahead and, and made all bear can routes manual routes. Yeah. And that's, and I think um, what you're going to see here is you're going to start seeing a common theme where, you know, what, what we're hoping from technology and engineers is this perfect can that can keep bears out, but also works with these fully automated systems. And I'm not so sure that it exists. I mean, I think that's what, that's where, that's where we're starting to land. Um, but you'll see here as I get into the other cans, um, what, what we've encountered with that sort of thing. But I think it's, it's interesting um, as you go through different jurisdictions, what, what they're experiencing. So I'm going to go to um, North Carolina. So Colleen, your experiences with Rear. Yeah, experience with Rear again. And Dave, I didn't realize till this morning, uh, I think the next slide um there might be the label wrong but we'll get to that when we get back to north carolina um so this is a photo and actually there's another photo and another slide of the same can this is a rare it was actually it's um our demonstration bear resistant trash can that we use at outreach events that's why it has the bears wise sticker and velcro where we put a sign however there's this one area that um it was a campground that was having issues. And so just to kind of see, test out this can as well as a, a retrofitted Schaefer can, which is in another photo, um, we deployed these and the bear was able to breach a rearing. We, we actually overall don't rarely see a breach of, of rearings from our black bears in North Carolina. Most of our rearings are deployed in Western North Carolina where bears are very human and food conditioned. Um, we rarely see a breach, but in this case at this campground, which uh, was southwest of Asheville, the city of Asheville in Buncombe County, where most of our conflicts occur in the state, this bear is able to breach it. We suspect it was able to breach it in this case because what we've noticed um, with rare eggs is if the can is not completely full. Say you've just got a couple bags of trash in it. So maybe it's half full. Um, if there's a lot of airspace then left, I, you know, if you, when the lid goes down, we think a vacuum gets created. And so in this case, we felt that, you know, the most likely reason the bear was able to breach this can is that you know it was not completely full of trash and that when the lid came down it compressed the air inside and as that air compressed it pushed up on that heavy lid and so we don't think it was fully locked so it might have been user error in this case of, of why the bear was able to easily breach the can i mean certainly um, it was somewhat latched, but it wasn't fully latched. And so between that and the biting and tearing, that bear was able to breach the can. Um, we've tested several rear eggs. Um, and then the rear eggs that we have in North Carolina are all the ones that work with the, uh, that are automatic. Um, we've tested those with uh, the dump trucks, you know, to make sure that it works with their uh, mechanisms to make sure that that lid does open up and we ha that they haven't reported any issues, um, as well as residents haven't reported issues with bears breaching weird. So to be honest, you know, when we have had a breach, it's, it's under five. It might only be one or two cans, the rear cans that we've documented a breach occur. Right. So yeah, yep. And then I can talk more. I think I don't know if I'm the next slide or future yep. slides. I can... You are. Yep. Your your toter manual. Okay. Yeah. So this is where I apologize, Dave. Where actually this is a rear rig auto and a retrofitted Schaefer. So we'll just have to modify it. it. So I apologize. I didn't catch that sooner, Dave. That's definitely on me. 
Um, this was a community that um, was using these. And again, there, there's a second example of a rig that was breached by the bear. But again, we suspect it's because the can wasn't completely full. There's that air. And again, as that, as that heavy lid closed, it compressed the air and then that air pushed back up. And so we don't think that rear egg was fully latched. And that's how the bear was able to breach the rear egg. And then the trash can in the background. So the city of Asheville, their non bear resistant trash cans that uh, are offered are, they, I don't know if it's still Schaefer, but at least two years ago, they were Schaefer. And Schaefer was experimenting with making their um, trash cans bear resistant using the similar locking mechanism as the rear egg. Um, and I think Toter uses it as well. What we noticed when we would test the bear resistant Schaefer with a Uno the bear at the Western North Carolina Nature Center is Uno is able to easily breach the Schaefer cam via the lid. And you can kind of see that in that picture, the lid, it's pretty flimsy. You know, it's not a heavy, thick lid like we see with Kodiaks and like we see with Rearings. It was just, to be honest, your traditional polycart lid. The only difference is they added a, a latching mechanism to try to keep the bears out. Not surprisingly, the black, you know, Uno the bear easily opened up that lid, pried it open. So then we said, okay, what about if we retrofit it? And so those are those green bars, those metal bars were added to try to prevent bears from being able to, you know, get in with their claws and pull up on the lid. Um, it had some additional benefits, definitely a bear that just would knock a can over and not try any further would move on because the lid would stay closed. But yeah, a bear, you know, of course, not surprisingly, that green metal retrofit, which is just a piece of metal all the way wrapped around the lid, yeah, then it stopped the bear from breaching. So yeah, this is a case where a Schaefer bear resistant trash can easily accessed without the retrofit, but even when you add the retrofit, it's accessed as well as, again, I think another example of a rig in which because it was not completely full um, when the lid closed, it didn't completely latch. And so that's something we try to kind of tell people that are using the rear eggs is make sure like after the lid closes, just pull up real quick to make sure it's completely latched. Right. And what I'm seeing is that the hardware on your Schaefer, that's the same exact stuff that British Columbia has. And it's, it's the company's Rollins. Okay. Um, and so yeah. they, they actually are, are, you know, trying to put that out there. And again, it, the idea makes sense and it's very similar to the bear saver carts. I mean, it's, you're trying to reinforce the body lid and then the lid of the can. But um, like you said, it's, it's still a modification versus specifically designed can itself. Yep. And again, I think a bear that doesn't try really hard, maybe, you know, that'll work. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's not completely without merit. Um, but again, a bear that tries to access, they can, they can still breach that can. Now, I will say what helped, and you can kind of see in the background, what has helped in some cases is simply chaining the, the poly cart. And in this case, they changed that, they chained the shaper. Yep. Thank you, David, to the tree. Um, that does make it a bit more difficult for the bear to really be able to knock it down and, and manipulate the can in a way to then start to work on that lid. Um, so, but you're talking about now you've got a retrofit of bear, quote unquote, bear resistant trash can tie, and then you have to try to secure it to a stationary object to further prevent. And at that point, I think there's better options. <laughs> Yeah, and that's and that's thing too is we got to remember. Uh, oh, so this is I I put this in here for folks who when we talk about the CPR method of what bears do, just in case you haven't seen it, I wanted to show you what that that looks like. So basically, they flip it over, and then we've got compressions. And I had not seen a black bear do this. I've only seen grizzly until like. Last week, um, we got video of a black bear 
doing this as well. And as you can see, it torques the whole body of the can and it puts a lot of pressure on that lid to open. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, a method. Um, so our experience and, and whoops, our experience in Florida um, was we had less than 1% breached. So by far the most cans we have out in Florida on the ground are these toter manual bear resistant cans. And 46 of the 14,300 that we have out got breached. So that's not a bad thing, except that the ones that are reported to us were breached exactly the same way. So you can see these four different pictures. Basically the bears go to the back of the can and they just unzipper it. I mean, they tear through right below the handle and they rip through the body of the can. So we're like, geez, that's, that's odd. Um, I wonder if Toter knows. So we reached out to Toter and two different representatives from Toter explained to me that they guarantee the lid won't be breached, but they can't guarantee the body of the can won't be breached, which I immediately was like, no. Um, so I reported that to IGBC, the Interagency Grizzly Bear Committee who certifies cans to be bear resistant. Um, and uh, since then, what Toter told me was, okay, send me your evidence that this is an actual systematic problem versus just one or two. So I did, and my evidence was all the pictures that I could get, but also the fact that we, our policy in Florida, if a bear breaks into a properly operated bear resistant can, we kill it because we don't want evolved bears. You know, if most bears can't get into it, but one bear does, we don't want that. So we, I think we've trapped, I don't know, over 20 times and we've caught half of those bears and put them down. So I can definitively say it's not the same bear doing it aside from the fact that it's, it's across the state. I mean, it's not just one county that we're seeing this. Um, so I've, I've frankly been very disappointed in Toter and how they've been non-responsive um, on, on this particular issue. All right, so North Carolina, this looks like the auto toter, am I correct? That is correct, it's the automatic toter. Um, this was a community that um, had gone together to order these and have them shipped and then deployed them. And, you know, they were still having bear conflicts uh, and they were interested in becoming a recognized bear wise community. So our staff visited them and while we visited them, um, they made a comment like, oh yeah, we're using bear resistant trash cans, but they don't quite, you know, we're, we're having breaches. And so they showed us this and um, it wasn't all the toters in the community, but it was a handful of toters in which the bears, as you can see, kind of similar to what Dave showed the previous slide, you know, uh, kind of breached it by just ripping in. And in this case, it was more the bear using its mouth to just bite and tear and bite and tear and bite and tear until they got access. And this was on multiple cans. Now the community said they felt um, they were able to prevent this from occurring again, again, by chaining the toters um, to a secure object until, of course, trash day. And then on trash day, rolling, rolling the toter out um, to be picked up by the dump truck. So they had found, again, a retrofit solution to what they were seeing, but still a concern that the, the, the can's not operating as it should. You know, and I think, you know, several of us see this, that, you know, the material that these companies use really does dictate, um, you know, the breaching, you know, if they try to get away with flimsier plastic, cheaper plastic, thinner walls, yeah, black bears are going to gain access. Um, and this is a perfect example of that. Again, they prevented future use, your future access by securing the cans to, to trees or to fence posts or to whatever they could find. Um, what was interesting is, you know, it wasn't quite obvious to me at first. I couldn't right away identify the can. Um, I, it didn't hit me that was Toter. And I asked them, is, you know, what's the manufacturer? Because it's not on the can. 
and they couldn't remember either, even so they had done a large order. So that's the thing is, if bears are breaching these bear resistant trash cans, the public's not necessarily going to identify, oh, it's, it's this company, so let's not buy it. They're going to just think all bear resistant trash cans are are breachable. So why right. bother buying one? Because they don't they don't remember the brand name of right. the can they just purchased. They just know it was a bear resistant trash can. So that's something we need to keep in mind is even you know we might have one great brand but then another that's not so good. But unfortunately, what happens with that brand that might have more issues is the public views all the cans have those issues. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then the, the issue you mentioned that I think unfortunately seems to be the case across the board is we're already asking people to spend a lot of money and do a lot of different things. And now we're saying, oh yeah, and go ahead and chain it somewhere. And at some point the public's gonna say, I'm done. I'm, I just wanna put my trash out. You know, And I, I think that's a concern for us that the more we, the more burden we put on people to do what we want them to do, the less chances they're going to be willing to do it. Um, so this one's a, a, a video uh, that Dave sent us uh, from Alaska. And this is a, the automated toter. Um, and you can see what this bear does. So it's not, there's a couple of, he wanders around a bit, but you'll get to, you'll see what he's going to do here. I mean, that, that's, that's not a whole bunch of effort. Um, and that's, that's the big concern there that, you know, we're, we're not, we're not going to be able to win people over with that. Yeah, that and that's something that we've seen over and over again with uh, both the rear eggs and, and uh, toters. Like I say, I think they use the same mechanism and it's just, they tend to either they push it across the, ground and it says a sudden stop and it just opens or they do that kind of flip it end over end and kind of a spin at the end and it just it just pops right open right and again it's like you they've got to figure out a way to comply with the waste service arm picking it up and not get it that confused with bears messing out with it so i just i don't again i'm i'm, I'm concerned that that might not be an option given what we keep seeing but but I will say um, that what Dave indicated uh, is the same thing we had with Kodiak here. We have not seen any breaches and we got over 3000 cans deployed. Um, there were some inconsistency with servicing as in the truck pulls up, it tries to dump and it doesn't, they've got to back it up and, and, and try it again. Um, but they were really responsive to our feedback. Um, the other really big benefit of Kodiak is the mechanism, the lock can be removed. So, and it's about the size of your palm. So let's say the, rock, the lock has failed, you can send it back um, or you can, um, you know, you can, you know, ask the company to send you a new one versus a giant can. Uh, so I think that's a, a big, to, for us at least, we saw that was a big benefit with Kodiak. Um, so, Tennessee's experience, same kind of thing, issues with pickup. And, and they actually said that what they found was pickup on slopes. So we don't have that in Florida, um, but in Tennessee, uh, when there was a slope, it was inconsistent in picking that up. And they were responsive, they came out to Tennessee, they tested it um, to try to figure out, you know, do they need to adjust the sensitivity of it? So again, that was, that was a good sign um, that, you know, yeah, they see an issue, but they're going to try to adjust it. But they didn't have breaches by bears, at least I'll say that. So the Rollins kit, this is the hardware that um, you also saw in North Carolina. Um, they basically said that you've got to do both. You put the kit on 
and then you attach it to a stationary structure. Um, and they feel like that is the answer. Uh, and again, I think that might be, I mean, that's what that's where Louisiana ended up with. That's where British Columbia is at, which is look, if you're trying to get a can that's gonna keep bears out, you're probably gonna have to abandon this idea of an automated latch and have it manual, which again, problem with that is you're asking more of the residents to do to do more. Either the resident has to get up in the morning and empty it, or sorry, and unclip it before service, or the company's gonna have to do it. And that's certainly an extra charge. So and uh, the Barracuda. So this is the critter can in New Jersey. Um, it's a screw top, so there's extra effort and certainly requires manual service. So what New Jersey reported was that the cans were getting breached by the bears chewing or crushing the sides and that actually made the lid open. Or in this video, you will see the bear just decides to unscrew it. So let me fast forward to that. Okay. So, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, it, you, we can't. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, tractors. <laughs> that's, that's right. All right. So, that's all I have to present. I want to open it up to others um, so that folks can share their experiences or, or ask questions of, of the panel. I guess Mark Fierre here in Colorado, I've actually got a question for our own panel, not yep. seeing anything in the chat yet. Um, a lot of our knowledge in Colorado comes from a, a project that, that he Dr. Heather Johnson and Stacy Lichka did for Colorado Parks and Wildlife around Durango. And it was an urban, well, not urban, but it, it was trash cans in, in dense housing. So when you didn't have compliance, a bear could go, this is my question is going relative to breaching a bear could move 50 feet down right. an alley and get a trash can that was either non-bear resistant at times or not latched non-compliant etc relative to spending a whole bunch of time breaching so in rural situations where the trash is distributed across you know large distances um i could see the breaching and i don't have an answer to this i'm just curious what other panelists see in terms of um, lower rates of breaching when trash cans are in higher density simply because there's other options um, for the bears to move on to. So I guess any comments from the group on that? I'll, I'll tell you, we, we've seen that where, because um, one of the things that we didn't talk about today was other things and other things people try. And so one of the things we offer people is modify your existing can. So put a metal gate hasp on either side or put four straps on it. Um, those work when the bear can just tip it over, it doesn't open, he goes to the neighbor. And you're exactly right. So what ends up happening is, at least what we've seen, is if that bear only has that can or three cans instead of 20 to choose from, um, then all of a sudden you're going to see that, that bear work harder on it. Um, we've certainly seen that because we've seen both urban, suburban, and rural. And it seems like the cans that that are getting breached or th that take a lot of time to breach, like the ones that are literally unzipped in the back, those tend to be the rural cans. Um, but I'd be, I'd be, cause I know um, Catherine in your area, you, you've got, you've got more, some of them is suburban and some of them are rural, but have you seen anything like that? Correct. Um, in our suburban areas, Basically, the bears will just continue walking through the neighborhood, knocking cans over till they find one with human error, um, knocking them over. And when that one pops open, you know, then they, they, you know, take what they want. But for the most part, in the in those highly populated areas, bears, because we've had issues with humans in that area, they think it's cool. Let's take pictures with the bears. Bears. They um, wildlife and fisheries. Um, see, that's, that's they. We have to. They usually go in um, 
once a year or once every other year, once we have identified several bears that do that, they will walk through the neighborhoods on a regular basis, knocking cans over and going through people's property. Um, they will go through three strikes and they're out once that bear has been tagged twice, they get tagged a third time, and then they, they euthanize them because they've become too human habituated. Um, but they don't stop. They just continue on through the neighborhood till they find a can that, like I say, they'll just knock over till they get into one. Uh, in the rural areas, because the population is spread out, I agree with you, you know, Dave, completely. Um, the bears do take a longer time working on those cans to get into them. Yeah, and it make, it makes it kind of makes sense. It's a it's the it's the effort, you know, per per unit effort. That if I can just keep walking, something that's mildly resistant might be fine. But if I have to go pretty far with the next can, and again, of course, it's their experience too that's going to change things. But any Correct. anybody Correct. else, like you, did, Dave, did you see anything like that in Alaska? Did you have kind of a variability there? Uh, you know, for the most part, we've we've seen them in urban. M most of the areas where we have bear cans are relatively higher density housing. I mean, even Girdwood, uh, which is a smaller community where we really start seeing the problems initially, um, the houses are pretty close together for our for our rural area. You know, we uh, Ang both Anchorage and Girdwood and Eagle River, we, we all of those places, houses are fairly close together for the most part. So I guess we haven't we haven't really seen that here as much just because I would classify most of our areas as kind of kind of urban as opposed to rural. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Colleen, have you seen anything different there? No, I, I, I mean, I haven't seen anything different, but partly, you know, where I, I'd say compared to Florida. Uh, Louisiana, Alaska, you know, we are not at the desired density of very resistant trash cans on the landscape that we would like to be. I will say, though, that, you know, anecdotally, you know, the communities and neighborhoods that have deployed very resistant trash cans, you know, the, the bears don't really try hard. You know, again, yeah, they knock it over and then move on for the most part. Um, they're not really testing the bear resistant trash cans. And it's for what you've already mentioned is they're very well aware that there's easier pickings elsewhere. And so just as we've seen in other states, if there's a one community with the bear resistant trash cans and within that bear's daily movements uh, within their home range, there's another street or neighborhood or community that doesn't really have bear resistant trash cans. Yeah, they're gonna, they're just gonna focus their effort there. Um, so even bear resistant trash cans, even sometimes a basic retrofit, we, we're seeing lots of people creating retrofits for their, for their regular trash cans because it is more affordable. Um, and, you know, those retrofits, the ones, some of the ones I've seen are not that great. In fact, we've tested them with Una the bear and he breaches them within seconds. There's one called the bear strap, which you can find on Amazon and is being locally marketed by Ace Hardware stores in Asheville. Yeah, that one got breached in seconds, but then you we talked to the communities and individuals that use those retrofits that don't work at, you know, when we test it, quickly fail within seconds. And they say it's keeping the bears out. And again, it's because well, bear knocks the can over, that strap does keep the lid from popping open. So then bear moves on to the other neighbor that has no retrofit, nothing on their trash can. So there is merit to some of these, even if we do have issues with them, there is merit as long as there's other trash cans on the landscape that are easily accessible. Yeah, which is frustrating because then it's, you don't want to tell people like, it doesn't work and then it does for them. But it, I think it's like you said, it depends on what your definition of that is. Um, hey Dave, we have a, we have, do yeah. have a question in the Q and A from Jim Stickles. Okay, uh, let's see. In communities where bears and cans are used, have there been situations where the problem escalates rather than declines, i.e. bears start becoming more destructive rather than moving on? 
So what, what we've seen is, it's interesting, um, we expected that, um, that, that if, if, they, if they were used to getting trash, um, they would start breaking into screen porches and gar uh, garages, and, and we have not seen that. Um, we actually um, were in the, the midst of trying to get a paper published that, that showed that um, as bears start figuring out that they, can, they can't get food, um, you get a 66% 60, decline in all other call types. So in pet food, in yard, in area. So they, they actually just abandon ship that they're not getting food versus um, escalate. Now they escalate on the can, like for sure. Like the first time you put your bears in a can out, it sounds like a thunderstorm, so it's running all over the place. But if they're not getting rewarded, we are not seeing that uh, across the landscape at least. Um, it may be individual bears, but we're not seeing that in general. I don't know if anybody else is seeing that. Yeah, we no in in Tahoe we have seen that. We've of course it's all anecdotal, mm -hmm. uh, but a, a very significant rise in home break-ins, garage break-ins um, since the. And I don't know what that threshold is. It seems to be around 40%. But since a, a threshold and people using BRCs uh, several years ago, that's when we started to see the, this, this rise in break-ins. So there are some other things that are taking place there. The, um, in Tahoe, it's, it's a lot of the activism. Uh, people are uh, afraid to call us. Mm -hmm. uh, when bears are at the that lower level of conflict, uh, when we used to uh, trap and mark and haze them, uh, so that that could be that could be a part of it as well. We're just not getting yeah. calls early enough, and bears are breaking in. I will offer one other thing on Kodiak cans. Uh, last year we had report several Kodiak cans being compromised. But they, Kodiak was very responsive in, in making some modifications and the cans that they delivered to our uh, waste disposal companies this year seem to be working better. Yeah, and I think some of the Kodiak thing is they wrote a mold. So it's the same thing as like a kayak. It's got two layers. And, and I, 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 that may be one of the biggest factors is the, you know, the others are it's not the lid, but the cam body is is one layer. So I'm not sure if that helps. Um, but yeah, so Colleen, you said you had not seen that. I don't know if, if Dave, have you seen that? Once you start seeing bears and cans more in the landscape, the bears escalate? Uh, I don't know that we've seen es if if uh, I guess it matters whether the cans are being breached or not. Right, that's right. <laughs> they don't need to escalate. Have, that's right. We had, yeah, if if they come in and they bang bears as the cans around and they can't get into them, I have not seen that escalate. Okay. Uh, it escalates is if a particular bear has learned to bang those rear rigs or toters around enough to where they just pop open. Yeah, they keep on they keep on going and they get worse and we yeah and we end up having to kill them or something. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so and Catherine, in your area, it was, I mean, it's countywide, sorry, parish wide. So that's a pretty dramatic, large scale change. Did you see anything when, when that started on the landscape? No, the bears pretty much stick to garbage cans, or if there's anything on the person's property, there's something outside. We mm -hmm. have not seen um, any you know, increase in bears trying to get into, now we, we've had the occasional where a can's being used, someone had a fish fry, the grease is inside, um, and the bear has gone after the grease that's inside because the people were waiting until garbage day, and that's usually where we have what we call camps, you know, where people are part-time residents at these, these uh, houses and things like that. And I think we've only had two or three of those, you know, over the past 13 years. So it's not like it's something, oh, I can't get in the garbage, so I'm just gonna go get in this house. No, yeah. we have not seen that at all. Okay, and then Mark, same thing for you because you guys, it was a research project. I mean, you basically just went in and big bam, now you guys all have cans. So that yeah. might be another option for that. Yeah, I guess I would, um, again, this work Heather Johnson did in Durango, 
in a controlled treatment situation, um, she found kind of the bottom line of one of her papers is that at 60% compliance, mm -hmm. I can't speak to the intensity of the bear attacks or, or destruction of remaining cans, but at 60% compliance in those treatment neighborhoods, we saw a decline in reported conflict numbers. Right. So that's the threshold um, that, that we found down there as uh, the, if we can get above 60% in a given neighborhood. Which again is 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 it helped me have a little better good attitude because if you need 100 percent you're never going to get it but if you can get if it's just the majority complying that's more sellable to the public in my mind. And at the time, the the cans that were used, um, not not that different from the Rollins hardware. Those were they were manual latch uh, cans that in that study were were the ones that the, the public was was expected to use. Right. Right. Well, Carl, we're we're at our 202 now, um, so I'm not sure what you want to do. Well, we started a couple minutes late, so okay. if, there's, if there's no last you know last questions, we can go ahead and end it here. Yeah. Any anybody have any questions? Anything you guys want to ask the panel or? This will be well it's recorded, and we will send this to Jennifer, and it'll be posted on the IBA. Uh, YouTube channel, and we, we'll send out that link through the forum uh, once that's done. Hey, Great. Dave, can I say one or two more things? Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, uh, like I say, going back to the Kodiak can, that seems to be working the best of anything. And you mentioned earlier, you know, trash companies not wanting to or not, maybe it's not gonna be practical to uh, get a can that completely works with automated trucks and is good and bear resistant. I know there's that thought out there sometimes. Um, the Kodiak can seems to be the closest on that, but mm -hmm. one thing I always try to remember is that the whole, the whole thing of automated cans, I mean, the cans that work with automated trucks and are still bear resistant, it's very young still. I think that's, yeah been going on the last five or six years at the most before that the trash companies would always tell me that's like the holy grail if somebody could figure that out so mm -hmm. i think we there just needs to be some more r d work on this you know that to, to really get a can and what you were just saying about percentages is is a great point that's something we we talk to the public a lot about is that we you know it's not bear proof it's bear resistant what we hope for is 90% more bear resistant than a regular can, not 20% more bear resistant yes. than a regular can. You know, we're, we're, uh, it's tremendous in reducing conflicts if we can get something up in the, in the upper range there. Absolutely. And really good point. Uh, it looks like, uh, so Tammy just said, thanks for information. I'm working on trying to get bear proof cans in our state. A few private landowners are using, uh, but no big waste company has buy-in yet and that it does it is a thing to try to convince a waste service company to to try this new thing that is more expensive than the regular cans maybe requires a little more finesse um but you know what we found is you know we were able to juice it by providing funds to get them there but you know if it's public pressure you know to ask their company to ser service them once they're on the ground, it's a lot easier to try to make that happen. So I, I hear you. Yeah, I was going to say that's what worked for us in North Carolina is Carolina. while the city of Asheville was happy to provide bear resistant trash cans, you know, they only service the city of Asheville. And so there's the entirety of Buncombe County that was serviced by Waste Pro. Yep. And, you know, we engaged with them quite a bit. But it really took basically residents that were serviced by Waste Pro calling them and demanding that they wanted access. They wanted what Asheville had. They wanted what the yep. city of Asheville offered. That's when Waste Pro started offering the options. So more so than anything public, you know, getting the neighbors, getting the public, the residents to demand it is going to increase the chance versus, yeah, us as agency biologists trying to convince these companies of the need. Absolutely. Yep. A very good, very good point. And, uh, then, Ryan, and I, 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 
Ryan, uh, I, I don't unmuted you in case you wanted to say something. He had a question in there or a comment. Yeah, thanks a bunch. This is extremely helpful. Uh, we've been, you know, I just started about six months ago the statewide conflict specialist program, kind of assimilating with the uh, ongoing efforts throughout the state of California with unit biologists and law enforcement partner agency. So we've got a lot of new folks starting, um, really looking into some of these, uh, really trying to focus on some hotspot communities for potential pilot program uh, for some of these uh, bear resistant cans. So this has been really useful for me uh, as, a, as a starting place. It sounds like Kodiak worked pretty well. And um, yeah, I'll have a ton more questions, but this has been very useful. So thanks a bunch. Um, also have some questions about some traps. I know there's been an uh, ongoing conversation about that for black bears, and I think I have a couple good resources, but uh, just wanted to say thanks for that and um, hope to see some folks in October. Gotcha. One more comment, everyone, too. Um, the IBA Management Forum, um, by which we invited everyone to this, those conversations that are posted to the forum are saved as PDFs. And we have had a couple, if I remember correctly, on BRCs and one on traps. So if, uh, if you're a member of that forum, and Ryan, I believe you are, uh, email Dave or I, and we can forward you those PDF conversations. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. All right. Well, thanks everybody. I really appreciate the participation um, and I appreciate the, uh, all the data that we got from our, our uh, survey folks and the panel. Um, and again, I think, I think what Dave said is right. We got to keep in mind that this whole fully automated thing is new and we got to work with them. And, and, and again, the nice thing is several of these companies are clearly willing to work with us to, to get it right. So um, have some patience, but we got some tools out there that we can use. And, and once people have them, they, they're usually pretty happy with them if we can get them to work. So um, I, think, I, think, I think it's promising. We just kind of juries out as far as how to get it exactly how we want it. I agree. Thank you, everyone.